What's happening, everybody? It is LSB with another episode of Lights Sports Breakdown. And today we're talking about the NBA. The trade deadline has come and gone. Some big trades happened this deadline, unlike previous deadlines where it was a, a trade here and there, maybe one big trade, but there was six big key trades in this deadline that I want to talk to you about today. Some contenders got better. Some teams went on a fire sale and traded a bunch of their assets to a lot of teams that are looking to make a late playoff push. So let's get into it and let's talk about these trades. So the first trade that we're going to be talking about is was considered the biggest. Well, in my opinion, it's the second biggest, but the biggest. So we're starting off with this one. But the Bulls traded Otto Porter, Otto Porter Jr., Wendell Carter Jr., and two first-round picks to the Orlando Magic for all-star Nikola Vucevic and Al Farouk Aminu. And I think uh, Gary Clark and someone else was included in that trade. But the Bulls got their an all-star center to put alongside Zach Levine, Laurie Marketing, and Patrick Williams. I know Vucevic is a little bit up in age, but he has still been playing at an unreal level. And the Magic, after Markel Fultz had an ACL tear and just plagued with injuries, the team just didn't look like it was going to compete this year, so they just decided to trade him to the Bulls. The Bulls are on the outside looking in. I think they're uh, like in the, the 12th seed currently. But they're not up to the eighth. They're they're definitely behind. So they had to make a trade with Vucevic. They can hopefully make a playoff push. I was honestly blindsided by this because I didn't think the Magic should trade him. I think they should have kept him. But I kind of like what they're doing. That they have a little youth movement going on. They currently still have Jonathan Isaac. They have Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony. They have Mo Bamba. And now you just added Wendell Carter Jr. Otto Porter, I don't know how he fits in the mix. He could still be considered for a buyout. But they have a lot of good pieces that they just need to gel together and get more experience in the league, and they could be a dangerous force in the NBA. But that's my reaction from the Bulls trade. I think I would give it an A+, because they got an all-star, and... It's very surprising that the Celtics didn't try to make a push for him, but they hesitated and didn't decide to offer the picks. But the Bulls got a really good player, Alfaro Camino. He's still decent when it comes to shooting, defense. He's still one of the... He can make an impact on the team, so I don't think that hurts. And Wendell Carter Jr. and Otto Porter weren't really working out in Chicago. So it's a win-win, honestly. All right, let's move on to the second trade. Second trade that happened was also with Orlando. Orlando traded Evan Fournier to the Boston Celtics for two second-round picks. Um, They got value for Fournier. Fournier is averaging 19.7 points per game. Boston's bench has been struggling vitally. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have been playing to another level, but Kemba Walker has still been inconsistent. Going back to his time in the bubble and then into this season. So the Boston Celtics needed an offensive punch off the bench or he could be starting. I'm not sure what their plan is, but Fournier is a good pickup for them. I don't know if it, fill, it fixes all of their issues. Like I said, their bench is their most key issue with them. Because if their starters are on the bench and they're... The substitutes aren't really scoring, then it puts the starters at an even worse position, and they have to fight back when they already got a big enough lead. So I think Fournier definitely helps the Boston Celtics team, but I don't think it fully solves what's going on at Boston, especially when everyone predicted them to beat the Miami Heat last year in the playoffs, and they just didn't play up to par, and the Heat ended up advancing to the finals. We all remember the story. The Celtics, the Celtics lost. The Lakers ended up winning the chip. But 
I like this trade for Boston. I think, like I said, 19.7 points is good. A big increase from their bench. And I think he'll plug in perfectly for the Celtics. And let's see how well he fits in Boston. All right. Third trade, which was another big trade with Orlando, again. But the Nuggets traded Gary Harris, RJ Hampton, in a first-round pick for a high flyer, Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon demanded a trade from the Orlando Magic, and he still... Uh, He's still very athletic. He's extended his range to the three-point line. He's had a semi-consistent jump shot, and he can be a force in the paint. Now that the Nuggets acquired him, they, that gives them the ability to start Will Barton, and Gordon will be alongside Nikola Jokic. And I think this is a great move. This Nuggets team made it to the conference finals last year. Well, yeah, they made it to the conference finals last year, but they just couldn't handle the soon-to-be NBA champion Los Angeles Lakers. But Gary Harris and R.J. Hampton, R.J. Hampton really wasn't getting that much playing time. He still has a lot of potential, but now I think he'll get a lot more playing time in Orlando. And Gary Harris, he... He can hit a he can hit a three here and there, and he's semi good defensively. But I think Barton is the better option scoring wise, and plugging in Aaron Gordon, where you have a good power forward. I mean, you still have Millsap, and Millsap's up there in age. Gordon is still semi young, so having him just makes your team that much better. And hopefully, this addition will speak volumes and. Help this Nuggets team make it to the finals, hopefully. They haven't been to the finals in a long, long time. So, hoping the best for Denver Nuggets fans. And I like it that Aaron Gordon actually, he got what he wanted. He wanted to go to a contender. And now he has the opportunity to play in the playoffs in the West. But the West is more difficult. He played a couple of times in the East. But I think that he'll be a key addition to this Nuggets team as they try to continue their leap to a title contention. All right. And now we're moving on to the fourth trade, the big trade, this deadline. And this is with the Portland Trail Blazers trading away Rodney Hood and Gary Trent Jr. to the Toronto Raptors for Norman Powell. Personally, I like Gary Trent Jr. I think he was a force in the bubble playoffs last year, but he kind of has slowed down a bit. His scoring numbers haven't been what they were. And uh, Rodney Hood, I think Hood's been really inconsistent. He can be an impact player on any team. So I'm glad he's getting the opportunity to go and play for the Raptors. The Raptors have struggled. And... There was all rumors about them potentially trading Kyle Lowry, but they ended up not trading him. They traded a bunch of people, and then Powell ended up being one of them. Powell is an NBA champion, and he has excelled this season. He's pretty much almost deadly from three. He's got a nice, smooth jump shot. He He's a pest defensively, and I think he's going to help this Blazers team because... The title window for C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard is closing. I think they're just getting older. Damian Lillard is still playing on an unreal level, and it's just unfortunate that he keeps getting bounced out of the playoffs every year. I would love to see this Blazers team advance to the finals, but you still have to deal with the Lakers, the Clippers, the Nuggets. Dallas is going to be in there, and it's just really tough to play in the West, but Powell, I think, is a great addition to this team, and hopefully it works out. He's got the rest of this season and the next season he's under contract for, but in 2022, well, 20, the 2022-2023 season, I think, he will be an unrestricted free agent, so hopefully he likes his time in Portland, otherwise he'll leave and find an opportunity elsewhere because a lot of teams up into there was at least 
up in the teens that wanted Powell's services during the trade deadline, but Portland was able to snag him from the Raptors, and they have another piece with him in there, with Melo and uh, Yusef Nurkic, and they have Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. They have they have a decent team. I think the team honestly got better from where they were last year, and let's just see how it goes with them. But I would give the Blazers at least a B. I mean, Gary Trent Jr. is going to be missed, but Powell is an NBA champion and knows what it takes to win in the playoffs and ultimately in the finals. All right. Now the fifth big trade. And I, I kind of struggled with this trade because I don't know how much better it makes them, but the Los Angeles Clippers traded uh, Sweet Pepper Lou, Lou Williams, to... The Atlanta Hawks for Ray John Rondo, playoff Rondo. And the Clippers, they honestly needed an upgrade at the point guard position. Patrick Beverly is more of a defensive-minded point guard, and his jump shot has not been very reliable throughout his NBA career. He can hit some key shots, but he's more of a defender. And Reggie Jackson, he has done decent, but... They, they need a true point guard to complement Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on this team. Now they got Rondo. They, they pursued him before the season began when he was a free agent, but he opted to go to the Atlanta Hawks because he wanted to kind of mentor Trey Young and the other guards there. Uh, Rondo is a two-time champion, one with the Celtics and one with the Lakers last year. So, And the, Rondo was honestly a big key to the Lakers being able to win the title. Obviously, you had LeBron and AD, but Rondo had some key minutes where he assisted or scored or he just made the right play at the right time, and it honestly paid dividends to the the Lakers, and they ended up winning the title. And now they the Clippers hope that he does the same thing that he did for them with this team. But Lou Williams, he is a three-time six-man of the year. Um, they honestly didn't really play in that much this year because of the emergence of Terrence Mann. So I think that's the main reason why they did this trade. And also to upgrade the point guard spot. That's the main issue with them. And now they have Rondo and hopefully it will be awesome if he is able to help them get to a NBA Finals. And then Rondo would bring a second championship to LA. I think that would be awesome. But... You know, it's so hard to predict in an NBA season what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's like March Madness. You think that the better team is going to win, but you never know what's honestly going to happen. I'm not trying to get too much into March Madness, but, you know, I think the NBA is just as exciting when it comes to that. And we're not even at the end of the season yet, so we still have lots of games to play. And now we're on the sixth big trade in this deadline, and... This one was just a straight-up robbery, honestly, in my opinion. The Miami Heat traded away Kelly Olenek, Avery Bradley, and a pick swap to the Houston Rockets for Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo has been rumored to want to go to the Heat since last year in the bubble when he was with the Indiana Pacers, and the Pacers ended up trading him to Houston in the whole James Harden trade. Up until the final minute of the deadline, the Houston Rockets were demanding Duncan Robinson from the Miami Heat. Pat Riley kept saying no. And at the last minute, Houston was going to potentially lose him for nothing because Victor Oladipo could potentially sign with the Heat, LA, New York, but mainly he wanted to go to the Heat. So Houston just said, give us whatever and we'll trade him. Kelly Olynyk has been struggling this year. And he hasn't, he's done really bad on defense at times. Avery Bradley, you know what he is. He's very impactful defensively, but he's had an injury that's since February and he hasn't played since. So the Key pretty much traded away two expendable parts of their team for Victor Oladipo, a guy that they could sell on the Miami Heat, key culture, and for him to want to stay there. And now he's just another guard that has 
great defensive minded skills. He's a scorer. He can go to the basket. He can dunk. He can shoot the three. And he can also help this team and pass the ball out. I think this was a big move for the Heat. They needed to make a move because the trade deadline was weighing on Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson. They weren't being like themselves. But now that the trade deadline has come and gone, Pat Riley believes in them. And now that they added Victor Oladipo, I think this will be huge for this Miami Heat team. They still need a big because they really struggled rebounding. And but they did get they did get a power forward from the Sacramento Kings, uh, uh, Nemanja Bjelica. I don't know if I said that right, but they got him. They ended up trading Mo Harkless and Chris Silva to the Kings for him. And I think he's definitely an upgrade at power forward. After they acquired him, that's why Kelly Olenek was expendable. But they need another center or power forward to complement Bam in the starting lineup or to relieve his duty when he's on the bench. Who knows if they're going to do it. But I really like this trade because they end up getting the guy they wanted. They were ultimately... They were, they were trying to acquire uh, Kyle Lowry from the Toronto Raptors, but their asking price was too high for an impending free agent when they had two young guys that could be deadly in this league. They opted not to trade for Lowry, and they end up getting Victor Oladipo, so it's a win-win for the Heat. And that's how the trade deadline ended with these six key trades. Let's see if all these contenders, if the trades will pay off. Or if it will end up biting them in the butt and some at some players that are free agents at the end of the season end up going elsewhere. But that was my reaction to the NBA trade deadline. Thank you for watching Light Scores Breakdown. This has been LSB. Thanks for watching.